All right, good morning, guys. We're gonna go ahead and get started with our reading lesson for this morning. What I want us to do first before we even get going on this is we're going to look at our timeline and just do a brief recap of uh, the chronological order of events of all the explorers that we've been studying. We started off with, with the natives of Florida. So we started off with looking at um, the state map that I referred to at one part of our lesson and looking at where um, the different uh, tribes that are native to our state lived and what they did and what was um, unique about them and then worked started working in um, historically so working in chronological order of the explorers who came um, not only to St. Augustine and just focusing on that but the other um, explorers who are a part of our state's history. All right our first explorer that we d talked about was who? <laughs> Ronnie. Who? Christopher Columbus. Tell me a fact about Christopher Columbus. He discovered North America. Okay, discovered North America. Excellent. And what country was he representing? He was representing Spain. Spain. Okay. Who was our next explorer that we studied? Xavier. Ponce de Leon. Ponce de Leon. Okay. Tell us a fact about Ponce de Leon. He, he discovered Florida. Okay, he was one of the ones that discovered Florida. What country was he representing? Spain. Spain as well. Okay, our next explorer on our timeline. Who came next? Victoria. Um, Navarres. Navarres. And what did he do? Oh, he explored parts of Florida. So he explored more of Florida, and we read about that. What country was he representing? Um, Spain as well, that's correct. And then the one that we did yesterday that we've just added to our timeline, Kennedy. Pedro de Soto. Can you speak up a little bit? Pedro de Soto. Okay, de Soto. What, tell us a fact about him. He arrives and explores so, Florida. Okay, so he also came to Florida and explored some more. What country was he representing? Cuba. Well, he visited Cuba. So he, he originated from Spain as well. Today we're going to look at another explorer on our timeline. Now, do you think all of the other countries in Europe wanted Spain to have all of the glory, everything for just for them? No. 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 So we have another explorer that came. I'm going to pass out to you the article that we're going to look at first today. And we're going to read a portion of this article. And you may recognize this name. Do you see the name of this this explorer? Gene. Who Rose? Gene Rebolt. Gene Rebolt. What do you know about Rebolt? Is it a school? We have a school named after it. We do. Why do we name schools after people? Xavier? Because, because they are famous. Okay, they're so they're history. famous. They're known for some reason. We have a school here in Jacksonville that we've named after this explorer. So we're going to read and learn something about it and some of you may even end up going to the school one day you'll have some knowledge about why the school was named after this person all right I'm passing out to you our informational text our article that we're going to use today to start learning about this next explorer now we're going to do our text coding like we normally do and I'm going to need a helper to come up here and help me to mark this. Shakira, you want to be my helper this morning? Come on up and grab your uh, marker. So today what we're going to look at, this is our first article that we're going to look at. We're going to talk about this informational text and we're also going to look at a poem because our focus today is we're going to be comparing and contrasting facts that we learn in a poem and how they help us with understanding information that we've seen in this article. Uh, okay. Looking at the standard and having the students focus on some of the key words in the standard helps guide what their task is for the day. So knowing that they weren't going to just draw a coat of arms and tell about it, knowing that today's focus was an opinion, why do you think? Your point of view is my coat of arms best represents the school. So knowing that they're going to have to share their point of view, and the part of that standard also says um, using the text, so knowing they're going to have to refer back to the text that they read for reading today, um, and also that they're going to have to argue their point. They're going to have to provide that evidence um, will focus their task. So the writing pieces that I'm going to see at the end of the day 
um, are going to be we're going to meet the standard. They're going to show that the students were practicing that particular standard. Okay, so we're going to start off with our article first. All right, so we have our title here. Now, Rose told us that she recognized right away that this said what, Rose? Jean Rebal. Jean Rebal. So let's look here in the article, because I don't know if we've introduced these different explorers. We've seen that they put the pronunciation in there for us. So let's look closely at how this is actually pronounced in French. This is a fact that I learned when I was reading this article. All right. Um, Mayana, do you want to read? And then Shakiri is going to, you're going to help her tell us what to mark. So when we're text coding, what are some of the things that we're marking as we read? Okay, Kimbrielle, what are we going to mark? Important things such in the text. Such as? Um, how do we know something's important? If you, if you know something that is important is from the text. Okay, so important facts from the text, things we need to know. Xavier, you want to add something? Mm -hmm. uh, important words, like words that we don't know, we circle them. Good, important words or new vocabulary, we are going to circle them. All right. So when we have somebody reading out loud, where are our eyes? In their text, we're following along. Okay, so Mayana, let's start off this first paragraph here for us. You have to speak real loud, okay? In 1562, Jean Robot. Oh, pause right there. What do we see about this? Po All right, so we've had here where we, it helps us to pronounce it, right? So let's look, let's break this down. How do we actually say his name in, Fr in the French pronunciation? Jean. You want to help Tykeria? Jean. So, Jean, so we have this J, so John, John Rebo. Rebo. Now we know when it's in capital letters, that tells us to say what? Rebo. That's how we, we emphasize that part. So when we say Jean Rebo when we see it on signs and when we see it, uh, the school listed, but the actual French pronunciation is Jean Ribot. Okay, so as we read the Explorer, we're going to use his actual name, his Jean Ribot. Okay? All right, go ahead, Mayana. In 1562, Jean Ribot was sent from France to Florida in order to explore the area and began a new colony. His lion. Nice and loud. Okay, louder. His lieutenant was. Lieutenant, uh huh. Lieutenant was Reen D. Lanria. Okay, now they pronounce this, they have this one for us down on the bottom. Let me slide the article up so we can say his name correctly as well. So we have Rene de Laudonniere. So he's Rene de Laudonniere. Slide this back into place. So that's his lieutenant. Do we need to circle any words here? No. What should we circle, Victoria? Lieutenant. Lieutenant. Let's look at that word real quick. What is a lieutenant? We need to make sure we understand who this Rene de Laudonniere is. Where have we heard that word before? Tykeria, where have we heard no. that word before? No. Have you heard that word before? No. I thought I saw your hand. Okay. Has anybody heard this word maybe with uh, the military or with the police? Mm -hmm. Ronnie? Is it a captain? It's, a, it's an officer, isn't it? Captain would be a different level, but a lieutenant would be another officer. So what do we, why do we think Jean Ribot needed to come with his uh, lieutenant, Rene de Laudonniere? What can we know, what do we know now about this word? Yes. I think that uh, why he ran his uh, long lieutenant is because he he when uh, something happens he he wants to uh, call his uh, lieutenant for something that goes wrong or something. Like that. So he has somebody to help him out, doesn't he? he? Has his support. If we think about that, like at our school, if we have our principal, right, and then he has helpers that work underneath him. So this lieutenant. Rene de Laudonniere, he was one of the helpers. A lieutenant was somebody who works under the leader to help them out with whatever their tasks are. Okay? 
All right, so we've got that word lieutenant. Mayana, can you keep reading? Um, using different technologies, another way to engage the students. We have the Mimeo board here where the students were able to, <laughs> she wasn't my most proficient Mimeo user, but with the Mimeo board, the students are able to get up and um, actually record their thinking on the, um, on the board. It turns any whiteboard into an interactive whiteboard. And what's um, nice about the Mimeo is it kind of captures the learning for the day. So any notes or any kind of text coding that we've marked on the Mimeo, I can save and then bring that right back up tomorrow um, with the students, rather than it just being erased and gone away. Um, and I think it's important for the students to own the technology as well, not just for the teacher to be the controller of all of it. Um, another way to keep them engaged is to, you know, to select out um, you know, somebody who may be more reluctant to participate otherwise, they'll come up and you, help you use the technology. Um, today's lesson I used some slides in a PowerPoint to be able to organize um, things that I wanted to show. So by putting the, um, the illustrations and the pictures into PowerPoint and having them in the order that I wanted to present them, I was able to easily flip back and refer to them as I needed. Rebo sailed with three ships that carry 150 people. Huge nets. Huguenots. Huguenots. Mm -hmm. Huguenots. Huguenots or French Protestants. France wanted to control this new land and drive out the Sp Spanish settlers. All right, Shakiri has underlined a lot of facts here for us. Shakiri, can you tell us? We have our first most important fact, right? It's naming who our article is about, Jean Ribot, that he came to do what? He came to explore the new colony. All right. Um, who can else? Who can tell us why Shakiri underlined this part? Ronnie, you want to help? Because it was important. Because um, he it tells us about what he was doing. Like he was sailing with three ships and okay, and so he was carrying how many a lot ships. Because that was in some of our other articles, wasn't it? With Christopher Columbus, how many ships that he brought in Ponce de Leon? Excellent. Yes, Victoria. Um, I think she underlined it because um, it's telling that he carried um, 150 people. So it's important to know how many people came with him. Did we see that in some of our other articles? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The numbers of people that came along? Okay. And then... There's one more thing in this section that's really important. What did we notice when we started off about all of the other explorers that we've studied? Ooh. Think about that for just a minute. What do you notice about our other explorers? Mm -hmm. Kennedy, what do you notice? That most people like to control the new land. Okay, they want to control this new land. Where were all of our other explorers from? Spain. Spain. And where is Jean Ribot from? Oh, he was from France. He's from France. So now we have a new country deciding they want to stake their claim on Florida as well. They don't want only the Spanish to have claim on this new land. Okay, so let's look at this next paragraph about what Ribot did when he landed. Ronnie, you're wanting to read? Okay. Read for us. Shakiri's going to continue landed, text coding. Rebo landed near the St. Augustine area. He sailed farther north to the St. John's River because he did not like the river Spanish name. He re renamed it the River of Maine. Today, it is known again as the St. John's River. At the month of the river, Rebault built a stone movement to monument. monument to mark his visit and claim it for France. And claim it claim for France. France. Okay, France. what do we know about this area? St. John's River. It's, it was renamed. Go ahead, Kimbrielle. That um, John Rebault renamed it. Wait a minute. St. John's River? Mm-hmm. What what what's familiar to us here? Have you Shakiria underlined of this fact here? He sailed further north to the St. John's River. What do we know about the St. John's River? Is that familiar to you? I 
Rose, you want to help? <laughs> okay. Ronnie, go ahead. St. John's River is still here now. It's here now. Where is the St. John's River? Just a few miles from here, isn't it? That's the river that runs here through Jacksonville, isn't it? So this explorer not only just came to Florida, he came specifically to our area, to Jacksonville, here to our city, okay? Now, what did he do to this river? Shakiria underlined a fact there for us. Jakiah, what did he do? He renamed it the River of May. He, okay, he renamed it. Why did he think he did that? What can we infer from what we've read? He did not like the, the river Spanish name. Okay, he didn't like the river Spanish name. What did we learn up here also? What did he want to do to these Spanish settlers? Oh, he wanted to control the new land. They want control over it. He wants to take control over this for France, not Spain. So what can we infer about France and Spain at this time? What, Rose? They don't get along. They don't get along, do they? Why do you think that? Because of the new land that someone discovered. Yeah, what were the Spanish saying? Why were they coming over here? Think about the other articles that we've read. What were they looking for when they came? Why did they even take that time like, to sail? They was looking for slaves and, and trying to discover new stuff. They wanted to discover new, new things. They were looking for spices. That's how and some money. of it started. And Jewel. money and gold, gold, the jewels and all that. Do you think the French wanted to sit back and just let the Spanish have it all? No. No. They wanted to stake their claim on Florida as well. So they came here to this river that's here in our town in Jacksonville and renamed it. Now, what did Rebaud, what did Rebaud do when he came to the St. John's River? Kennedy, what did he do? He built a stone monument to mark his visit and claim it for France. So he built a stone monument. He stuck this stone monument there so they would know that this area was claimed for France. We're going to stop there with our article for right now. We're going to spend some more time talking about this stone monument and what Rebo did to claim it for France. Thank you, Shakira, for being my helper. Okay, I'm going to erase this text, Cody. Xavier, you have a question or comment? Um, I got a, I think I got both. My What's question up? is, um, why would why would he be, build a stone monument? Why can't he just why can't he just do something else except for a stone monument? That is an excellent question. I think we were brain sharing this morning because that's exactly what we're going to look at. Why would he need to build this stone monument here? What was so important about it? Is the stone monument still there today? Let's talk about that. That is actually what this picture is right here. If you go to this area, Fort Caroline, we're going to talk some more about that tomorrow when we read the rest of the article. This monument, there's a, there's a replica of this, the original monument that's still there. Now, when I went and did some other research on it, it turned out the actual place where this monument was is now part of the Navy base of Mayport, where we, not everybody can go and see it. So what they did is they made a replica of the original one and put it here at this park where everyone can go and visit. It's a historical place now where you can go and see. Um, some things to keep in mind when planning an engaging lesson is you need to have a hook. It needs to be, you need to hook it some, the student into the learning in some way. It needs to be something that relates to them personally on their level. So for example, today the hook was is that the, this explorer um, was here in our area of Jacksonville. And, this monument is something that they could actually go and visit and see today. Um, part of the article talked about the St. John's River, which is not too far from our school here. So, um, and drawing, drawing those connections for them, helping them to see, this is why this is important for you to, to listen up today and focus on this lesson, because it does relate to you. Um, another way to engage students is to continually make those connections between things that they've learned. So. Um, in my introduction today, I also referred to the timeline that showed the other pieces that we've already learned. Um, and then referring students back to even other subjects. So I had one student um, in the poem, it talked about blood. So and they recognized that blood flows because of science. So allowing them to make those connections from other content areas is an important way to keep them engaged in the lesson as well. 
um, knowing when it's time for you to talk and when it's time for you to stop and listen is important. There were times where I was about to say something but I stopped because I realized a student had something that they wanted to share and um, a lot of times the point that they bring it up and the way that they say it is probably even better than I could have. Um, so, you know, being able to see that um, the, the student's contribution to the lesson is just as important as my preparation for it. This is the actual monument that's right there. And you can see, what is it looking out over? The St. John's, John's River. It's there at the river. Let's How look at it. How did they know that it was here? Oh, you got words? I got some more pictures for you. Okay, so here is a closer uh, picture of the monument. So there's this symbol here, and we're going to look more specifically at what that is. And then it has uh, some information that was erected in 1925 by the government of the United States of America to mark this first place where Revo landed. Yes. All right? Yes, and it is in our, our text as well. We are going to look at that. It said it's the symbol of France. It is. What part of that is the symbol of France? The, Use the, the text features. What is it pointing straight to? Go ahead, Ronnie. It's pointing straight to that of uh, the face. They're like It looks like a kind of face. It does kind of look like a face, doesn't it? Let's refer back to our text because they gave us a caption here, and it's pointing directly to that. What? Let's see, who can read that for us? What is that, Kimbrielle? The symbol of France is the fleur de... Fleur de lis. Fleur de lis. Lily flower? Which stands for lily flower in French. Now this fleur de lis was the symbol for France. Now let's look at some other pictures. of These are some artists, what they did to show how this originated. Yes, who was this? The Timucua. The yes, the Timucua Indians. So, where, so we look at our map of Florida. What area did those, were those Indians? Uh, the lowlands. The lowlands. The lowlands, this northern area, right? Where Jacksonville is, isn't it? So this is who they saw when they got here. Well, what, what else is familiar in this artist's drawing here? Jakaya, what else do you see? I see the symbol from the monument. So there's that symbol from the monument. And what they actually did is they took this square, this is another one of our text features, and they drew it out. They made a close-up for us so that if you couldn't see all of the details in this artist's picture, you could look at this close-up. And Because what do you think the author of this illustration wants us to notice? What the, specifically they want us to notice? Shakiria? The symbol of France. The symbol of France here. That's an important part of this whole thing. So if this is the symbol of France, you guys have told me these are the Timucua Indians. Who can we infer that this is here? Tykeria, who is that? The when, who would this man be? So think about what we just read. Think about all that we've just are that we've learned about the ones that are native. Go ahead, Shakiria, help her out. Jean this would be Jean Ribot right here. This is an artist's picture of what it looked like when he met these Timucua Indians and they established this monument. He put staked his claim there for France. Yes, ma'am. Um was the Timucua nice to the um to John Rebo? Well, what, what can you infer from this picture? What would this artist? It looks like they're friendly. What tells them. you that? Because he's saying hi to him. Okay, so he's saying hi. He's got his hand raised. What else do you notice? Yeah. He has, he, I see like other legs. I see the people back there. So there's some other French soldiers back behind here. Now where this close-up is taken, I'll actually show you on the next picture. Here it is without color. Here's another version of that same picture without the close-up. So what do we notice over here? This Timucua over there. There's more of the Timucua Indians over here. What else, Xavier? Uh, that they're uh, bowing that down to the monument. Yes, okay, so they're here. They're, it looks like they're kind of bowing down to these new people, this monument. Let me flip back to the color one. What did they do to the monument, to this area around the monument? They, they, it looked like they put flowers. No. They've got flowers yeah. ringing it and circling it. Uh, 
Rose, what else do you notice? I have a question. Sure. How, I, I've been having this question for a while. How can they claim the land when the Native Americans was there first? Oh, that is a bigger question that we, once we study all of these explorers, we're gonna talk about. You're thinking ahead, I like that. You're really thinking about this. What else do you notice here about this picture, this particular one? Kennedy, what else do you see? That they got bows and arrows. They've got, okay, so they have some of their, their bows and arrows here, some of their things that they use for fighting. What else is here? Go ahead, Ronnie. I think the reason Timber Claus trying to be friendly with uh, John Rebo is because he probably got a lot of food. So they, they probably brought some things with them. So they have this food, this whole feast. And they're, looks almost like they're celebrating, doesn't it? What's that? I think they're celebrating now. But I think they're celebrating him, him for claiming the yeah. land for France. It's hard, whoops, it's hard to tell, but you can even kind of see his arm is over here on Rebo's shoulder. He looks like a king. This is maybe one of like the leader of yeah. the Indians, the tribe here. Could be. Jean Rebo. Jean Rebo. Now here's what I want us to notice. Why do you think of all the things that Rebo could have put on this monument, he chose this symbol here? This is what I want us to focus this next part of our discussion on. Why would he choose choose this. First of all, does anybody know what this is called? Have you seen this before? Ooh. We've seen it on some of the ships of our other explorers or on some of the flags. Do you it remember? It maybe represent like their country or like when people unite for the army, they have like little stuff on their um, clothing to represent our city or state. Absolutely, it represents France. So this particular symbol here, this is their coat of arms. So we've seen coat of arms for some of our other explorers on maybe on their flags. Some of them had it on their ship. He chose to take this particular coat of arms that represented France and not just anybody in France, the king of France at this time. Yes. Uh, did he did he just put it put it on that monument or did or did he put it on ships and other things for France? He probably had, this was the this was the coat of arms that represented them at this time period because this was the coat of arms specific to the French king at this time, and he chose to put these three fleur de lis. There's a crown on top. These different symbols on the coat of arms. Yes. Can you what? Go ahead. Uh, I think I think that uh that he was a, a, a important man man in that time because 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 he changed because he changed the uh walk, the um the river and he uh, made the monument so he is important to this time period no, it's important to create a safe place where students feel like they're not going to be shut down for sharing an, an idea that's just come to them. For example, um, Xavier that's making his connections um, all throughout the lesson, he, he has that comfort to share them because he knows he's going to be heard. And even if it doesn't relate directly to what my point was for the day, it, it helped him to understand what it was. So um, it's really important to give them that opportunity to share. Um, a lot of times within that close is where they, because they're drawing connections and the part of the close of the lesson is, um, you know, connecting everything back, um, just creating that safe place where they can share those ideas and what they're starting to think. And it also helps me as a teacher see were there any misconceptions today. So if they share a connection that I know is really off base, then I can build that into, you know, if I can't correct it right then, I can build it into the introduction for the next day um, and address any kind of misconception the student may have had. This coat of arms, yes, ma'am, Shakiria. Did when uh, when Juan Rebo when he built the uh, his little uh, statue and um, claimed it for French, did he have it there for a long time? Did like, he have to say one more time? Did he have to what? Did he have it for a long time? time like um, when they first came? Oh, did he get to keep that land claimed for France for a long time? We're gonna get to that. I want to, let me, let me calibrate real quick. Oops, wrong side. We're going to look at a poem to see why Jean Ribeau picks specifically this coat of arms to use to stake this land. Now, this is a poem 
about a coat of arms. Okay, about an importance of coat of arms. And we're going to really look at this. So I need you right now to think about all of the explorers we've learned about, all of the reasons why they came, what they were doing for their country, for Spain, and now think about Ribo and what he did trying to come and stake their claim on Florida and on this new world. And let's look at this coat of arms and why he chose on this monument to put a coat of arms for France. Okay, so let's look at this poem. It's called, it's titled Coat of Arms. And I need, I, I need another Mimeo helper. With, Rose, do you want to come help? Rose, we're going to do some more coding up here and see what we can find in this poem. All right, I'm going to read it to you this time. That's a little bit tricky. So, so long as it runs in the blood, so long as it's bred in the bone, shoulder life over the mud, let it proudly be blown. In whatever hour you must, relinquish your hold on it, toss the brightness down in the dust for death to trample across. I included a poem in today's lesson because poetry is an excellent way to bring out a lot of um, the symbolism within because we were looking at the symbolism in the object and we've talked a lot about with poetry about the symbolism that comes with words. So having the students be able to draw those connections between a text feature that was presented and a poem, um, I knew that that would help lead them to a greater understanding of all of the symbolism in the text, being able to um, look at what, not just the symbol, but this picture, this feature was a coat of arms, or just a picture of a coat of arms. But what, what, what I needed them to get to in this lesson was what is the deeper meaning behind that? Um, and by looking at the words and the language in the poem, it was able to bring around a new understanding, not just of this coat of arms, but what a coat of arms meant in general. Um, so now I know, um, as we continue to study this unit, that's something they'll be looking for, is these coat of arms and different symbols. Um, some students were even bringing up ones that they had seen in previous lessons, you know, on ships or flags of other explorers. Um, so bringing in that, that ability to look at the symbolism um, in words and cross that over into symbolism that they see in pictures and illustrations um, was really helpful in this lesson today pretty deep, isn't it, when we first just look at it. Let's see if we can break some of this down. We want to look some more at these coat of arms. So what, what's your, what do you first, let me just ask you, what do you think when you first read it? What do you start to, what do you think of? Kimbrielle? That, um, like all the explorers who try to, ex like, um, express their feelings and how they, um, like, like when they die, don't like cross there or try to mess with their land. Okay, so they are coming over. They're they're willing to die for this new land and for this cause of coming over to this country and staking it. Okay, what part of the poem tells you that? What part of the poem made you think of that? Oh, and whatever hour you must relinquish your hold on it, toss. Okay, whatever. They mean by blood, they mean by the St. John's River that they claim. Mmm, so long as it runs in the blood, so long as it's bred in the bone. Do you think they're talking about the river here? Yes, yeah, because it says runs in the blood. Maybe. Possibly. Possibly, yes ma'am. I think it is the water because you know when water can run through stuff, so I think it is water. Water runs through and like, okay, like we know blood runs through the body. We've talked about that in science. So let's, do you think that they, they literally mean, what, uh, blood, what do you think is it? Can you circle it for us, Rose? What do you think they mean by it? Whoops. Tap on the pencil. There you go. What do you think the, the author of this poem means by it? What is this it that is going to run in the blood and is bred in the bone and is proud, strong, with this coat of arms? What do you think? Ronnie? When it says it, I think it's being pacific. Like, like it's trying to tell us, like, this St. John's River. Mm. Or something yeah. that... Well, so think about the or title. Or the coast of the arms, or okay. it's something that runs in the blood. Kiana, what do you think? I think it means by it is coat of arms. Like that coat of, what are the, what did the coat of arms represent? France. Students make connections in their own time and in their own way and at different paces in the lesson. And it's really important to, um, 
to read your to read your audience to know when you're starting to lose them but also to recognize those light bulb moments because when they have them and they can bring that out um, sometimes even for me it's it's connections and things that I hadn't even realized that I hadn't even thought of um, each reader in the class brings a unique perspective to the text so by allowing them to have that time to make that connection and to share it with their classmates um, for one it validates their learning they they now have ownership of that content they, they know it they've made that connection and by a student being able to share that with another student it I'm sure there were other people in the room who had that light bulb moment as well it brought um, you know, as teachers, we bring our own experiences to a lesson and our own knowledge and understanding, but a lot of times our, our students are just as great of a teacher as we are by making those connections for their peers in a way that relates to them. So this it has to do with that country, with their, the king and the country and the people. Now think, of, think about this. This isn't just this specific coat of arms, but this poem's talking about all different coats of arms. So maybe coats of arms for the Spanish, if some people can look up their last name and there's family coats of arms that go with families historically. But think about this, so what is that? When you have a coat of arms and you're thinking about your country and your family, what do we think that it is that this poet's referring to? What kind of feelings do we have when we think about our country and our family? Shakiria? We have good feelings because like, when all of the Native American people that we've been learning about, they had feelings and good feelings about claiming what they want to claim. So that good feeling, that, that pride almost, right? That pride and um, that excitement for that, whatever the cause is, that they're, they're willing to do anything for their family. Are you willing to think about your own family? Somebody comes in and tries to mess with somebody in your family, what happens? You do something really bad. You do something back, right? Because that's your family. You want to protect what's yours, right? Mm -hmm. So same with this coat of arms. These coat of arms are representing, in this case, it's re in the uh, Jean Ribot, it's representing France. But in general, these coats of arms represent that pride in their family, that pride in their country. Really oh, we're going to get to that. So, so long as it. So what is this it? Yeah, that pride, that symbol of France for this particular one. So long as that pride and that, um, that, that feeling, that good feeling Shakira is talking about that we want to do whatever we can to protect ours and our own, as long as that run, runs in the blood, so long as it's bred in the bone, shoulder life over the mud, let it proudly be blown. So what is this, what is this author saying about a coat of arms? What do you think, Xavier? they mean about, about your family and uh, um, let me see oh yeah your country and what and what and you stay and what's claiming like your family or stuff like that okay Shakira you want to add yes I think by the coastal arms they mean when the next of the Americans claim their lands and when they protect their lands and their family so they can claim it and they can protect it they're they're proud of it, aren't they? Let it, let, it be, let it proudly be blown. So don't just hide that this is your area. Don't hide your coat of arms. This is tell something everybody. you bolt. Yeah, you tell everybody. You show everybody. You have like skills. Almost like bragging rights. Yes. Show your skill and, and show, show, show all, all that you got. Exactly. Show the, all that you've got, all you got, why they wanted this area. They let it proudly be blown. So let's look at this next stanza. All right, in whatever hour you must, relinquish your hold on it. What is this word? Let's circle this word relinquish. What do you think relinquish means? You must relinquish. That's okay. Relinquish. There you go. Hold that. Perfect. That's good. When you relinquish your hold. Yes, ma'am. Like to keep. So if you keep your hold on it. Whatever you must relinquish your hold on it, toss the brightness down in the dust. What other context clues can we use to figure out what this word relinquish means? Kiana, what do you think? It has re in it, so it means again. So again, relinquish. Re, okay, so re kind of means, okay, we know the prefix re is again. Let's see if that fits this particular word. Relinquish your hold on it. Toss. When you toss, what do you do? You throw it, right? You throw it away. So what do you think this 
Relinquish your hold on it. Toss. Victoria? Um, maybe to, um, like, um, get rid of. To get rid of, to let go. So it, whatever, we'll just let you just click on it. Whatever hour you must let go of your hold on it. Toss the brightness down in the dust for death to trample across. Yes, ma'am. Um, when when they say that stanza two with mm -hmm. the whole thing, I think they're t I think they're talking about the mom the monument. That mean like like if you mess with the uh, monument, something bad will happen. All right, what you guys are getting ready to do now is I'm going to give you another piece of informational text to look at. This is tells us more details about what is in a coat of arms because everything that you see in a coat of arms stands for something else. So we're going to look at the meaning and see what exactly Jean Ribot's coat of, coat of arms stood for. So look closely at the colors, the animals, the items. So what, co what, what colors? There's an eagle. Where do you see an eagle on the monument? So there's some kind of bird down here. What kind of, what do you think that is? I think it is a hawk. Maybe a hawk? It look like an eagle. What does it look like? What do you think? Maybe some sort of, what did an eagle mean on a coat of arms? It says, eagle means noble, alert, brave. Why do you think that they would have an eagle on a coat of arms that represented the king? that's how the United States of the bird. That's how a bird of the United States. Well, it is States. our bird. We can talk about that, too. Think about why would this be on the coat of arms for France at this time? Uh, because, because he wanted to show everybody that, 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 France, that someone in France was here in Florida. True. What about this bird, though? What, what do we notice? Look at what this what this eagle noble, brave. What are those kind of words? Those make us think? are like strong, it's like they're strong. strong. Yeah, so it's just like it's just like red. It's just like red, but it's just a little bit. Attitude. So red could also mean brave and strong. What colors were used in in this one in this coat of arms? Gold and blue. So gold. gold what is the gold? gold. Generosity. Generosity. What does that word mean? Uh, it's like, it's another word. Like generous, it could be the, the base word. What does that mean? Uh, generous means uh, you're nice, you're honest, you're honest, you get Thank, yeah, you give to people, you're yeah. generous, you don't keep things back to yourself. Not selfish. Blue. Not selfish, exactly. What else is in this painting that would make us think generous? What else did we notice in that? The flowers and stuff. Children. The flowers, all of the food laying in front of there, that all that bounty, that feast we talked about. Oh, where's yeah. flowers? I don't see flowers. So what did, what do they want people to think about France? That, that they're generous, aren't they? They want us to think. They want us to think that France is generous. The holly. So yeah. All right. So look at the plants around there. What is the holly? Truth. Truth. So why would that be important on a coat of arms? Truth. That that they say truth like no lies. So okay. So everything is true. They're not telling the Timucuan Indians there are any lies. Okay. I had a question about the crown because the okay. crown, like this crown, it has a pointy, and that crown on that is like just flat with dot with designs on it. It's kind of hard, and that may just be the way the artist drew it onto there. This is what we see on the actual. So if we flip back to the photograph of it, this is what it looks like there. Okay. Where's a crown on this? Should be a crown. Does it have a crown on there? No. It's supposed to. It's supposed to say crown. It's supposed to have. It's a crown up here, but they don't say. They don't have crown. Yes, ma'am. Can you some help? Why did they? Um, why did they put for this? Why did they put all this stuff on? Front? The floor de lis. Remember, we talked about the floor de lis was what? Use the caption. <laughs> It's a lily flower. So this is a this is a their picture. This floor de lis represents a lily flower. So a type of flower. Does 
Does it list flower on there yeah. for us or plants? Let's see. Yes. It's really flower plant. If we go like outside, the front, we'll find a lily flower. They're a specific type of flower. We can pull up a picture of an actual lily flower. That's they have that they have a stem and then they have the one white bloom on the end. So that's kind of what this is representing: the stem and that flower. And these would be, I guess, the leaves off the stem there, this lily flower. Do lilies go in the water or do they just go? There are types of lilies that grow in the water. You think about it, Easter, did you guys see white flowers recently for Easter? What did those look? Describe those. There was white um, with a stem at the bottom, I think. And then it had like a yellow circle in the middle, in the middle. So with those white were, pillars around. Yeah, those around were it. Easter lilies. So those are lilies that bloom at Easter time. So it's that same type of symbol. Okay? Yes, sir. Uh, I, I do they have a sword. See, look, there's three swords. Use the caption. Are those swords? Mm. Use the text feature. What is this actually? That's what we were just talking about with that group. Is this actually, are these swords? What are they? Um, They're lily flowers. Can we, um, like horseshoe is a good look. Mm-hmm, that's a symbol of good luck. Have you seen that somewhere else? You didn't realize all these things meant different things, did you? No. But when you see it places, now what do you know that it stands for? Good luck. Good, Good luck. luck. They have that, um, different definitions. Yeah, like it's two kinds of horseshoes. Like you read about horseshoes? Horseshoe, like it's a horse, a shoe on a horse, and then there's a horseshoe like for good luck. So that symbol, same mm -hmm. thing. So if you, yeah, there was a hand in this picture, then that would represent faith. We have that dove. What does that look like? Look at your list here. What, is, what do you notice about this around the outside, around the edge? Can we talk about that? Can we talk about that? The plant, the holly, the truth? You guys have made some excellent observations. There's a ribbon on mm -hmm. there, here, but I don't know if there's a ribbon on there. Check the other side. What did we notice about why there would be a ribbon? Uh, a ribbon could be placed above the entire core of arms or at the bottom of the shield. A motto, short, motto. motto oh. short goal or idea is placed on the ribbon. Okay. Jakai, what else did you say? I put, I circled rainbow because it says good times after bad times and it stands like after, after it rains, a rainbow appears up. So you're like making all kinds of connections, aren't you, to other symbols you've seen? In, in my I put, I put arrow, like, cause they had the little arrow right there, and like, when they have the arrow, they get ready to battle. Is a symbol of battle. Is it? Oh, it's an excellent connection. So we're going to come back as a group and talk about that, okay? All right. Class, I need you to bring your attention back up here to the front. I noticed in your work that you guys have had some excellent conversation about some of the connections you made. Let's look at some of the things you noticed and think about why they're on this coat of arms for France, okay? Now, the first thing a lot of you talked about was color. Tell me what you noticed about color. Hey, Shakira. Well, actually, everything represented something, but the colors, it was telling about truth and stuff. It was telling, okay, so which colors was for, which color stood for truth? Blue. Okay, this blue background on this coat of arms, what does that blue stand for? Truth and loyalty. Truth and loyalty, okay. What else did you see, Ronnie? Silver. You saw some silver in there? This artist drew it a little more gold. There could have there's been gold. silver. There's silver right there on the thing. The top the where. Okay, the on the crown. Okay. What do you notice about that? And sincerity. And sincerity. Yes, What does it mean to be sincere? Sincerity. Nice. When you're gen like you're genuine, you mean what you say, you're sincere, you're honest. Okay. Oh, hold on to that. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. I know you're excited. Okay, what other color? 
I did, I did gold. Okay, the gold. What did the gold stand for? Uh, generosity. Generosity. What does it mean when we're generous? Say, um, you're nice. Not more than just nice. You're nice because you what? You nice. Take care, yeah. What? Um, thankful for what you got. Yeah, you're thankful because people have been generous. They've given you, given you more than you need sometimes. Yeah. What about some of the other symbols in yeah. here? We had this fleur de lis, right? That we learned about in our article. Yes, yeah. ma'am. The outline of black. The outline. Mm -hmm. Well, this was what was what was around what was around the coat of arms. What was that plant? It's gold. It's colored gold. What else was it? The holly. What did that holly stand for? Truth. Truth. Okay, so let's stop, guys. Let's think about this. Had arrows too. Think about this. Why would why would Jean Ribot. Let's go back to how we what we started with. Why would Jean Ribot want to put this coat of arms on this monument? What do you think, Shakira? It's because, like, um, probably because the France is a good country or place to be, and then he put the colors there for a reason, like in. Uh, on this paper, when it says what it represents, it probably represents France too. So he wanted them to know that this represents France, didn't he? Ronnie, you want to add? The additional sheet that the students used, um, on one side of it kind of broke down the pieces of a coat of arms and what each part represents, why there were animals on a coat of arms in a certain place, why um, a crest was used, why a ribbon would be on there, and what the ribbon rep represented. Um, and an additional piece of that broke down what the different animals meant, what the different colors were used for, um, and then also some of the different symbols. So I wanted them to be able to take that piece and really break down, not that this is just um, you know, a crest with, some, with three fleur de lis on it and a crown, but what did that really mean? What were they trying to portray when they, um, when they used that? Why do countries and families, um, you know, what, what, what do our symbols represent? So now some of the students already started making connections to things that they see on the collar for the military and other symbols. So just taking that, this idea that we've introduced and then continuing it on into what, can, what am I noticing now? It's you know, opening up their eyes to um, all, a new different way of, of looking at symbols and looking at um, things that they see every day. So Jean Ribot wanted with this coat of arms, he wanted to show not only that this land was for Spain, so what, the connection you just made, pardon? France. I'm sorry, I'm making rhymes. So it's for France. <laughs> Go ahead, Cambriel. I met, like, because she put, like, I have a connection, like, like a connection. Like, for the colors, you know, it's like a family tradition. Like, when you have, like, these, like, different kind of um, colors and, like, different kind of cultures and traditions that people do. Yeah, when we thought, when we look, think back at that poem, it's that culture, that pride in our family, that pride in our country. Now think about, okay, let's think about all of our other explorers we've looked at before we wrap up. Think about the other explorers we've seen. What was, what was important to them? Why, think back to their purpose, why they even came. Do they support, do they support France? Do the other ones support France? Well, no, who were they representing? Spain. They were representing Spain. They were already here. They were already starting to establish. That was it Timucua and um, Jean, Jean, Jean Ribot? Jean Ribot. How was they getting along? Oh. Was they getting along? What do you think? Is it, is it important for, the, for it to seem like they're getting along? Yes something to think about. And when you come to a new place, when you think about what they came, they brought there, who did he bring with him? He brought, look back at the article, who did Jean Ribo bring with him? Look back in the first paragraph of our article. His lieutenant. A lieutenant. Well, who else? His soul. His 150 people. 150 people. Now, do you think he just took any, when we think back, well, who came with our other explorer? who are they? Soldiers. Soldiers. They didn't just come with anybody, right? 
So when you come somewhere new, like a new school, like a new school, okay. What do you what do you, do you want to come in with a pack of soldiers and say no. we're here to take over? No. You say that you like yes, this, like maybe when sometimes people are shy. Okay, so what do you, why do you think he chose? Let's go back to our question. Why did he choose this to put on this monument here? What did Jean Ribot want them to know? Yes. He wanted them to know that, he wanted them to know that that's his tribe and he claimed it for his tribe. He's claiming for his, and his tribe is what? France. 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 He's claiming this for France and not just, yes, go ahead. Uh, I got another connection. Oh, okay. <laughs> Go ahead. That that uh, the monument. I think I know why the temple is smiling down to it. I think it's because it's just like them, them and, and everybody bound down down to France, France because because they're kind of the same thing. France is showing them what with this with this coat of arms and with all this. They're showing them their what? What were all the traits in those coat of arms? What did it mean? They're showing them that they are, what, Victoria? Oh, what? They're kind. They're kind. True and loyal. They're loyal. They're generous. They're yes. sincere. They the they're saying the truth. Yeah. Now we're gonna look. We're gonna look later and see as with our timeline if that's what really plays out. But when they came to this new land, what did they need these Indians to know? That they was going to take they're, over. They're claiming the land. Slaves. They weren't going to hurt them. They weren't coming to just take them over. Now, we know their true motives, don't we? Yes. Why did they come to the new land? So they could take over so the they land. Could claim something. They could claim it. They could take it as their own and claim it. But, uh, but they didn't make them slaves, did they? Yes. Okay, we'll talk about that. We'll get there. All right. We're going to stop there with these passages for today, and we're going to get ready to transition into the next piece. We're going to work on a writing piece. So let me get you guys started. Oh, it's a, diff it's a different kind of writing piece. I'm going to get you guys started on it. This is what we're going to do today. Now, you still need your articles, and you still need um, this one about your coat of arms specifically. Here's what you guys are going to do today. We're going to focus on this opinion writing, okay? So we're focusing on this next standard here. We're talking, we're thinking about our opinion. Now, when we say opinion writing, remind us what that is. Yes, ma'am. What you think, like what, what you think is something. What you what think, you and when you share what you think, what is the important part of the standard? Not just that you say, I think this. My well, opinion is. Your opinion, so we're gonna write an opinion piece using what? Go ahead, Xavier. Using stuff for, for the text. Or okay, from the text. So we're going to use the text. Uh, and you and you had to, to, to support to support it. Support your point of view. So your point of view is your okay. opinion with reasons. with reasons and information. So here's what you guys are going to do today. Here's your task. We've talked about these coats of arms and what they stood for for these countries. Your task today is going to be to take what we learned in reading with your article and you are going to design a coat of arms for West Jacksonville Elementary. You're going to think about the animals, the colors, the symbols, the parts of a coat of arms, and you're going to have some time to make a coat of arms for our school to show what our school represents, okay? Then you're going to work on your writing piece. You're going to write your opinion piece that goes along with your coat of arms. You're going to have to use the information that we talked about in our text today and think about all of our different explorers and why they, their purposes for using that coat of arms and how it represented them. And you're going to support your coat of arms. So your opinion today, your point of view is going to be your coat of arms that you've designed for our school. The writing that they're going to do today, again, there'll be a lot of conversation going on. The students will be referring back to the texts and the passages that they used in reading um, in order to create their own writing piece today. So, and that conversation is going to be a necessary um, part of that because they're going to want to talk to their neighbor next to them. Well, if I include um, 
you know, this part of my opinion of why I think this should represent our school, um, they're going to want to talk about that, and that's an important part. The silent room, um, wouldn't, we wouldn't get the product that they needed. They wouldn't be able to, um, to really think about it, to really be able to verbalize. A lot of students process verbally, and that's how they make those connections and have that greater understanding. Then you're going to write that opinion piece using some of our text to back up the reasons why your coat of arms best represents West Jacksonville. Okay? Any questions about your task for writing? All right. I'm going to pass these out, and then you guys can go ahead and begin. Yes, ma'am, you have a question? We are. That's going to be our last activity before we go to lunch. Okay? Something that's really important here is we've moved away from a separate um, reader's workshop and writer's workshop and worked more into an integrated, what we call, literacy block. Um, and literacy block and its design um, brings in some of the, the pieces of Common Core um, because reading and writing are so integrated. Um, by taking that idea of this is what we're going to read about today and relating it into writing, um, we've seen all year long that students have shown tremendous growth both in their reading and their writing skills. Um, by not compartmentalizing and segmenting students' learning, um, they're able to make those greater connections and bring about a greater understanding and learning beyond what we could have even anticipated for them earlier in the year. Um, today's lesson brought in social studies, it brought in reading skills, we even dappled in some science, and then we brought in the writing. So really, today was a um, comprehensive of all the different learning that a student needs to do. Um, and that integration and that really thoughtful and purposeful planning into a lesson, it, it's, it's extra work, but the results that you see are tremendous.